Why Answers in Genesis is wrong on Darwinius Massale, commonly known as Eda. AnswersinGenesis.com published an article in response to the media coverage of a recently discovered fossil of a yet unknown species now named Darwinius Massile. I want to begin analysing the article by looking at the included list of facts. Answers in Genesis writes about the found specimen. It resembles the skeleton of a lemur. Darwinius Massile shares some characteristics with lemur, and uh, probably do share a recent common ancestor with them. However, lemurs, like all member of the Strepsirini, have a so-called toilet chlorum second digit of each foot, and teeth ordered in a structure referred to as tooth comb. These are essential distinctions between the Strepsirini and other primates. Darwinius Massile, however, lacks these characteristics. The list goes on to say that Eda has opposable thumbs, which the ABC News article states are similar to humans and unlike those found on other modern mammals, i.e. implying that opposable thumbs are evidence of evolution. Answers in Genesis does not give the name of the article, and there are several ABC News articles on the case, so I didn't bother looking up as whether there really was any indication that they implied any of this. Even if they did so, it doesn't matter because ABC News is not a peer-reviewed science journal, like those I'm using as references. What the specimen's opposable thumb does tell us is that Darwinius is distinct from other mammals, and belongs to the primates. The talus bone is described as the same shape as in humans, despite the fact that there are other differences in the ankle structure. For this, they give a reference to the article in which Darwinius Massale has been described in the journal PLOS 1. I search for the words humans, talus, and ankle in the article. They are not there in any context that appears relevant to me, so there is no way to tell for which part of their statement they are referring to the article. But let us assume they are right, and the talus bone has a similar structure as in humans, but with differences in the ankle structure. So what? If this specimen is a transitional form, and thus evidence for evolution, we would expect exactly that. Some similarities and some differences to human anatomy. It thus transitions from one species to another. I really can't see what they are trying to achieve here, but let's see what else they got. Next, the article does make reference to a lack of a tooth comb and toilet cloth. Unlike today's lemurs, as far as scientists know, Eda lacks the grooming claw and the tooth comb, a fused row of teeth. In fact, its teeth are more similar to a monkey's. Uh, these are minor differences, easily explained by variation within a kind. Kind is not a scientific term, so I do not know for sure what they mean here. But here are the jaws of a lemur and a Darwinius massile. There is an obvious, important difference. Given these facts, it may seem incredible that anyone would hail this find as a missing link. Given the fact that the term missing link is completely meaningless, it may seem incredible that anyone would hail this find as a missing link. Yet British naturalist David Attenborough claims, Now people can say, OK, you say we're primates. Show us the link. The link, they would have said until now, is missing. Well, it is no longer missing. This is so horribly quote-mined that it sounds like Attenborough is suggesting Darwinius Massile is a link between other primates and humans. This is not what he said at all. Here is the actual quote. Now people can say, OK, you say we're, we're, we're primates, like monkeys and apes, uh, and that we came from very uh, simple, generalised uh, mammals. Show us the link. The link, they would have said, until now, is missing. Uh, well, it is no longer missing. So actually, he suggests Darwinius Massile to be the link between other mammals and primates. This might well be the case. The article continues with six points under the title The Creationist Interpretation. The first point is Nothing about this fossil suggests it is anything other than an extinct lemur like creature. Its appearance is far from chimpanzee, let alone ape-man or human. However, no one suggests this to be an ape-man or anywhere near modern apes. It might be a link between earlier mammals and primates. Point 2. A fossil can never show evolution. Fossils are unchanging records of dead organisms. 
Evolution is an alleged process of change in live organisms. Fossils show evolution only if one presupposes evolution, then uses that presupposed belief to interpret the fossil. Fossils can show evolution if they are transitional. This means they share characteristics of an earlier existing species and a later existing species. Such transitional fossils are a prediction of evolution. Point 3. Similarities can never show evolution. If two organisms have similar structures, the only thing it proves is that the two have similar structures. One must presuppose evolution to say that the similarities are due to evolution rather than design. Furthermore, when it comes to transitional forms, the slightest similarities often, often receive great attention while major differences are ignored. Transitional forms are about whether a fossil shares some characteristics of one and some characteristics from another species. How big certain similarities or differences are in the sense suggested here does not matter. All that matters is that the fossil is transitional. Point 4. The remarkable preservation is a hallmark of rapid burial. Team member Jean Harm of the University of Oslo said, This fossil is so complete. Everything's there. It's unheard of in the primate record at all. You have to get to human burial to see something that's this complete. Even the contents of Eda's stomach were preserved. While the researchers believe Eda sunk to the bottom of a lake and was buried, this preservation is more consistent with a catastrophic flood. Yet Eda was found with hundreds of well-preserved specimens. If a global flood were responsible, you would have had similar conditions all over the world, you know, because it is a global. However, since we find a particularly large amount of fossils at Messel in Germany, there must be something special about this place. Whether there was a flood or not, evidence suggests that poisonous gases were present which caused animals to fall into the lake. Point 5. If evolution were true, there would be real transitional forms. Instead, the best missing links evolutionists can come up with are strikingly similar to organisms we see today, usually with the exception of minor controversial and inferred anatomical differences. The lack of a tooth comb and toilet claw are not minor differences. These are essential characteristics of lemurs. Many other clearly transitional fossils exist, for example, Archaeopteryx and Cynosaurpteryx prima. Point 6. Evolutionists only open up about the lack of fossil missing links once a new one is found. Sky News reports researchers say proof of this transitional species finally confirms Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Well, Attenborough commented that the missing link is no longer missing. So are they admitting the evidence was missing until now, supposedly? Sky News is not a peer-reviewed journal. Their journalists are not evolutionary biologists. Attenborough pointed out that we do not have a fossil showing the transition of previously existing mammals to primates. This, however, does not take away the massive amount of evidence scientists already had. My conclusion is, Answers in Genesis fails epically again. Absolute nutter!